Well, good afternoon, everybody. Glad to see y'all. You know, we always have to remember that well, God says two or three or more gathered together in my name. I'm in your presence, and he's with us here tonight. Yes. And we thank him for that. We thank you, Lord, that you like to dwell with us and help us to be who we be. Y'all know how we start this thing, though. We take our little red rags and we wave them and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For shedding that blood on Calvary. Yes. <clears throat> it gives us our salvation. I really didn't know what I was going to talk about tonight until I opened my Bible and I turned right to some scripture in Matthew. And it's going to be a little bit about religion. You know, my wife likes to say that <clears throat> religion will kill you. Well, it will. you got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ to live. You don't need religion. You need Jesus Christ. And you get him through God's word. Well, Jesus had some words for his disciples and for the Pharisees. In Matthew chapter 15, verses 10 through 20, we see so where Jesus is teaching the disciples, but also letting the Pharisees learn a little bit. Mm -hmm. In verse 10 it says, And he called the multitudes and said unto them, Hear and understand, not, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which come out of the mouth, that this defileth the man. <coughs> then his disciples said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Mm. Let them alone, that they be blind leaders, but leading leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. <coughs> and Jesus said, Are you yet without understanding? Do you not yet, do ye do not ye yet understand that whosoever entereth of what of that whatsoever entereth in the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out by draw. But those things which proceedeth out of the mouth come from the heart, mm. and they defileth the man. For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornicators, thieves, false witnesses, and blasphemies. These are the things which defileth the man. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Amen. You know, this scripture tells us a good bit. It started off with him talking about not that which goes into a mouth defileth the man, but that which coming out. This defileth the man. And you know, you go to the book of James, he teaches a good bit about the tongue and what the tongue can do and what the tongue can say. And we have to be careful when we talk. We have to be careful what we say. Mm -hmm. If we don't let God lead us in what we do and say, then we can be in trouble. Well, when he said this, it, it upset the Pharisees. Why? Because what were they teaching? The Pharisees were to be teaching false doctrines. Mm -hmm. What do we have in some of our churches today? Mm -hmm. Some preachers that preach false doctrines. Yes. They don't preach the true word of God. This is not good. The Pharisees didn't like it because he was actually getting on to them. They didn't like it because they couldn't understand what he was saying. And of course he said that, you know, those that, those that don't know what I'm saying don't know how to be right. He, he, he put it this way. He said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, what's going to happen? They're going to go the wrong way. Well, to me, that would upset the Pharisees even a little bit more because he was saying they were the blind, leading the blind. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be cast into 
hell with the rest of the bad people. Well, the, we know that the Pharisees continually were looking for ways to, to persecute Jesus, to, to take him down. But even though he could look them straight in the face and tell them what they were doing wrong, it didn't bother him. He knew what he had to do and he knew what he had to say. That needs to be us today. We need to know what we need to do and what we need to say when we're talking to people about religion and about their salvation. This ministry we have here, we don't, we don't, we don't put it under any kind of denominational name. This is a, a ministry of Jesus Christ. Yes. And that's all it will ever be. If anybody tries to change that, they'll be doing something they shouldn't do. We have had people come in here that, yes, they they might have been talking the wrong way. They might have been doing the wrong things and might have wanted to speak here in this ministry and if I'd have let them they'd have probably talked the wrong things but they, it never it never came to, to be why? because God knew better God opens our minds to know what we need to do with the people that don't talk the truth and he showed us that in more than one occasion in this ministry alone but we need to understand that what we say and do is what comes from the heart. We were talking last night in our Bible study and talking about the Beatitudes and how we're blessed and all the promises of God. But we need to understand that what God gives us, we need to use. And we need to use it in the right way. We don't need to use it in the wrong way. Even the disciples, when Jesus said this, they didn't understand. Now, why? They've been close to Jesus. They, I mean, this is chapter 15 of Matthew. They've been with Jesus for a while. But almost every parable he told, they had to question him and say, Jesus, explain this to us. They were totally in a learning position the whole time they were with Jesus. And the whole time he was with them, he was teaching them, not only them, but the other people. Now, there's a lot of people that didn't get what the disciples got because Jesus taught the disciples some on his own without other people around. So they got a little bit extra, but they needed it. Why? Because when Jesus was crucified, it was their job to go out and preach the gospel. Just like it's <laughs> other people to be able to preach the gospel to say good things coming out of our heart rather than this other stuff. And Jesus went on to explain it to the disciples. He said, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare this unto us, unto us as parable. Are you also without understanding, Jesus said, Do you yet do ye yet understand that whatsoever enters into the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the drop? <clears throat> You know, and he, he says at the end, nothing that enters the mouth can defile at the man. But we know that the Jews were particular about what they ate. So they would tell you that some stuff you eat is not good for you. But we know that Saul, when he was on that road to Damascus and Jesus let down that sheet in front of him with that stuff on it, it had every unimaginable thing you could imagine that you could eat. And Jesus told, or God told him, says, whatever I say is clean, is clean. And you can eat it. Well, we know that there's even delicacies such as cockroaches overseas. People eat them. Uh, numerous things that, that, that people eat overseas that we would never think about touching. But God let let, let the disciples know here that anything that you take in it's going to go through your body and come out. But what the fight at the man is what comes out of the mouth. So we need to be careful what we say. You know, I can look back on my life and 
see some things I said about people back many years ago that I probably shouldn't have said. I can remember several instances where I said I'd never speak to them, I'd never have nothing to do with them, and these same people today, I'm probably closer to it than I've ever been because they've turned a leaf over to and come and, and got to know God and know Jesus Christ as their Savior. And it's amazing what that does to change people. So some of the stuff you put into your body can be good for other things because you need to put into your heart what Jesus Christ gives you. You need to put into your heart what the Word of God says. That's what builds us up. That's what gives us the strength we have. That's what gives us the ability to be able to witness to people. Not to teach them religion, not to teach them some denomination, but to teach them Jesus Christ and the way to be saved. Because that's the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. A lot of people will say there's many different ways to go, but we know that the truth is that if you're preaching the truth, you're preaching nothing but Jesus Christ, and that's what we have to do. And that's what I hope anybody that is a good Christian is doing, and they're not trying to lead people in the wrong way. Even though we have churches today that they ordain people that shouldn't be ordained as pastors. They let people get up in front of people and speak that shouldn't be speaking. In the last church I was in, there was more than one revival we went through that people came to that they asked our pastor, pastor could they come and speak sometime? And he said, well, I'll contact you. He didn't say, yeah, they could. Why? Because he knew they were not the right kind of people to be speaking in that church. Mm -hmm. They knew that they were going to say things that shouldn't be said to a congregation. And there was one instance where two men was doing this with the pastor, and I was standing there with him, and it kind of, when, when they walked off, I said, you're not going to let them come, are you? He said, you saw what I saw, did you? I said, well, I know them two don't need to be preaching in this church. He said, exactly. So God will give you the ability to recognize people that are not for God. He'll give you the ability to be able to, to know that what you need to say and how you need to say it to people, even if you need to turn somebody down, what to say. Because when the blind lead the blind, and we got a lot of that going on in our society today. Mm -hmm. you, you know, a lot of people put a lot of stuff in face, a lot of faith in Facebook. But there was a big discussion that came on Facebook the other, other day, and it was about Trump. Well, a lot of people don't like Trump, but a lot of people do. A lot of people think Trump has done a lot of good for this country. I do. But this person that posted this thing had several people come back, come back and comment how, how, how well they thought Trump did too, but we had one person come back and say, that Trump had done nothing but tear this nation. <laughs> and she went on with a big old long spill about it. And I happened to get interested in it and decided just to read everything that everybody commented. And more people were commenting good about Trump than they were bad. But she kept coming back. And she finally quoted some Democratic presidents of the past and said if he was anything like them, he would be okay. <laughs> Well, that's when I had to chime in. God said, you got to say something about this. And I did. I quoted the presidents that she quoted and added one to it and said they were all Democrats. But they were Democrats who were working for the good of the people. Yes. And the Democrats today are working for the good of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I left it at that. Well, I don't think she ever commented to my comment, but several people said amen. And that's what we face in our world today. We got the blind leading the blind in our government. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I hate to say it, but we got some Republicans that are the same way. But that's not for us to worry about. What God wants us to worry about more than anything else is how to get how to reach people for Jesus Christ. He goes on in the scripture and says, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. They defileth the man. 
For out of the heart proceeded the evil thoughts, murderers, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. With unclean hands defile not a man. Now you know when you read that, <laughs> what's a big thing today? Wash your hands every time you get a chance mm -hmm. for at least 20 seconds. Well, you know what? That, that may keep you from getting some things, but washing your hands ain't going ain't gonna to be what saves you. Washing your hands is going to be something that just keeps your hands clean. Now, I know a lot of things are transmitted through what you touch and things that you come in contact with, but yet still, the scripture right here says, that you don't have to worry about unclean hands. You have to worry about an unclean heart. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was talking about in this verse above that, about all the different things that can happen. And it talks about blasphemies. And we know that the unpardonable sin is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Yes. And, uh, let me see. Where was it? In Matthew 12, it says, Wherefore I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Mm -hmm. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Mm -hmm. So, that lets us know what the unpardonable sin is. And I hate to say it, but these people that are speaking lies against the church, that are speaking lies against God in church, are blaspheming the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit should be what's guiding the church. Mm -hmm. And if the Holy Spirit's not guiding it, then guess who is? Satan. And I, I, we need to pray. You know, that's something else that's been brought up a good bit in our studies lately is prayer. Are we praying like we should pray? Are we praying as much as we need to pray? I don't think we're praying as much as we need to. It says to be in a constant mode of prayer in, the, in God's Word. So that means we need to be praying every time, all, all the time, all day long. Mm -hmm. You say, how can I do that? Well, you've got a direct access to God 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So you can pray all any time you're awake. You might can even pray while you're asleep. <laughs> If you're dreaming the right dreams. <coughs> but we need to understand that we need to know who we're dealing with. Who we're talking to. What they're saying. We need to, we need to, have, we need to pray for discernment so that we know when people are talking against God, we understand it and we know what they're doing. We need to know that it's don't, it ain't going to hurt us to confront people who are leading people in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Because they need Jesus just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to do that because we're afraid we'll hurt somebody's feelings. If we know a preacher that's preaching in a church that he ain't living the right kind of lifestyle and we go to him and say something to him about it, we know he's probably going to get all over us. And so we don't want to do it, but we should do it. It don't matter what he's going to say to us. If God tells us to go straighten somebody out, we need to go straighten them out. Mm -hmm. And he will tell you people to go to. I've, I've seen it happen in many instances with different people, how they've come back and had to witness about how God told them to talk to somebody, and they put it off, and God kept nagging them about it until they went and talked to them and found out that was just what they needed to do. And they were blessed for it. Again, go back to the Beatitudes. If you look at the Beatitudes, God promises us so much if we just do what he says. If we let the right things come out of our mouth that we need to say, then we don't have nothing to worry about. We can do all the things we need to do and still accomplish what God wants us to do. Now, You say, yeah, but 
I'm not a good speaker. I don't know how to give a good testimony. I don't have a good testimony. I just got saved. I don't have nothing special to tell nobody. Yes, you do. You just said it. You said you got saved. You got a testimony. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't have a spectacular testimony. I don't think I have one. For what I'm going through right now, I've got a, a testimony that, that is going to help certain kinds of people. But other than that, you know, my testimony is not something that's overpowering. But I still, I need to reach people for Jesus. Mm -hmm. I got saved. That's enough in a testimony that we need to give people. Mm -hmm. That's all that needs to come out of our mouth to people is that Jesus Christ is here for you. Yes, we have to do it in certain ways sometimes, and God gives us that direction. We need to be close enough to God to understand him what his word says and what his word wants us to do, that we know we go and say the right things when we come in contact with somebody that needs to hear it. His own disciples didn't understand the stuff he was telling them, which means we need to take time to study God's word to understand it and listen to what he listen to what Jesus said and let it sink in and let us be able to take it and use it the best way possible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, God's not going to put, he says it in his word, he don't put more on us than what we can stand. Well, you know, sometimes we go through so much stuff in our life, we say, God, you just, you, that's not right. You've put more on me than I can handle. We have people that come to our ministry that are, in need of prayer constantly, just like I am right now with what I'm going through, because they have medical conditions. There's a lot of people out there in need of prayer for that. We prayed this morning for a young lady in a church. My wife did, because she's been having some troubles. We never know what somebody's going through mm -hmm. till we talk to them. And you know, a lot of times it's better to listen than to talk. God gave us two ears so we can listen twice as much as we talk because we ain't got but one tongue. Mm -hmm. So we need, to, we need to realize that. We get somebody to talk and we need to listen to them. We need to listen to what they say. My wife has people that she ministers to that tell her that they don't believe in God. But you know what? She's turning them around. She's saying things that makes them see that, that God exists and that God is real. You don't have to preach it to them. You don't have to teach it to them. You just have to live it. You have to let them see what God has done for you. You have to let them see what God is doing for you and what, they can do for, what he can do for them. And that's all in how we speak and what comes out of our mouth. So if you get a chance, just take the book of James and read it and just see what the tongue can do. Mm -hmm. I've done a study on it a time or two, and it's a good book to study because it helps, us, it helps you to learn how to control your tongue because that, the Word says that's the most uncontrollable member of your body that you've got. It's the most dangerous. It can do more damage than anything else you can do. You can hurt somebody greater with your tongue than you can with a weapon. Now, that's hard to believe, but you can. Mm -hmm. There's people that I'm sure each one of us has said something to before that has turned them against us and they'll never speak to us again. Mm -hmm. I know one or two in my life it's that way, but it's been a long time since I've seen them. But I also know that the same thing can happen in reverse. You could, That person can see you have a change in your heart and your life and they might know that they can talk to you again. So you need to you need to understand that just because somebody says something against you, it's not the end of the world. It's not it's not it's it, it, it's not going to be that we'll never be able to speak to that person again. These people that's come into this ministry that I wish they would come back. I don't know that something was said to them that caused them not to come back, but I would love to see them again. I'd love to see them during the day when we're here during the week. I'd love to see anybody that would like to come in to be with us. 
But we need to understand when we speak to people, we need to be speaking piety. We need to let them know that we're praying for them. We need to let them know that we'll do anything we can for them if it's at all possible within our reach. And that's what being a good Christian is all about. That's what being a child of God is all about. It's not, being, it's not about being part of a denomination or being part of some big group. It's about loving Jesus and sharing, his, sharing the word of Jesus Christ with people. And I want to thank y'all for listening to me tonight. I hope you got a little bit of something out of this. I just try to read the word and, and explain it a little bit. I, I'm kind of like what another pastor said today. I like to teach more than I like to preach. And one day when I get to where I can holler at you, I'll start preaching. <laughs> but I do want you to remember that if you have prayer requests, let us know. We, we'll be glad to pray. We don't release that information to anybody, but we put, them on, we put people on our prayer list and we pray for them on a regular basis. We also have Bibles. If people need Bibles, we'd be glad to give them out. And if you have Bibles that you don't need, we'd be glad to take them and give them out. Mm -hmm. And again, just like in a ministry, we like donations. If you'd like to donate to our ministry, you can through PayPal or you can through our Facebook page. Or you can do it by mail. At Three and One Ministries at 15 South Forest Avenue, Luverne, Alabama, 36049. And if ever you get to the point that you need Jesus Christ in your life and you don't know what to do, come see us. We'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Be glad to let you know that all you have to do is say a little prayer and Jesus can come in your heart We'd be glad to pray with you, pray for you, and help lead you after you accept Christ as your Savior. That's one of the most important things in anybody's life is when they accept Christ that they stay with a good Christian family to help lead them in the right direction. Because just because you get saved don't mean everything's over with. You need to start learning more about Christ. And you need, can do that through fellowship with other Christians, good Christians. Not a denomination, but with Christians. And I thank you, and I love y'all, and I hope y'all have a good week. I have a big week ahead of me, and I hope y'all will be praying for me. And <clears throat> I know everything's going to be good. God's done told me. And I'm going to be able to go through whatever I need to go through from here on out. So, just I, I, again, I covet your prayers, and we'll be praying for y'all, the ones that need it. Just wanted to remind everybody that we're here at the coffee shop most days, Monday through Saturday, except Thursday, from about 7.30 till about lunchtime. But now this week, we've got appointments on Monday and Wednesday. Yes. But if that yellow flag is outside that says open, we are here. Yes. So stop by and see us. We'd love to see you. Yes. Chances are we won't be here at all Monday and or Wednesday. That's, that's my next two appointments. And tomorrow's appointments are pretty lengthy, man. We have to be there early and be there pretty much most of the morning, I imagine. And the other one was, was with my chemo doctor again. And that could be an interesting visit. So pray for that one for me. Be in prayer that I don't say something I shouldn't say. I think I did last time I was in there. Might have hurt some feelings, but I, I just I had to say what I said, and I felt like God wanted me to. So just, just be in prayer for us this week as we go through our appointment. But we will be here Tuesday. We'll be back Friday and Saturday. And we'd love to see you if you can all possible come and be with us. Thank you. And we love you. And if you need Jesus, just remember to give us a call. We'll pray for you over the phone if we need to. Thank you. Now have a good week. <laughs>